back to another episode of Imagine More. We missed you guys. It's been one uh, interesting week. Um, both candidates are kind of getting towards the end, and some are gaffing up left and right. Others are coming in strong. And so we're looking, we have a great show. We're going to dive deep into this last week of our politics before the big game, which we all know is the election on Tuesday. And so we decided to bring on a great guest, Miss Nia Johnson. She is, Hi. yes, she has so much good insight. And, you know, I look forward to hearing from her and Seth. He raves about her all the, all the time. So <laughs> we look forward to getting her college and, and uh, so she can bless us in our, in our podcast. And Seth is back, like always. I'm back, just like he, always. He missed he misses you, <laughs> but yeah, Seth is back, and we have a good show for you guys. How you guys been this week? Stressed, been, you know. Stressed. Same. I've been stressed. Can't sleep because of Trump. It's Can't like because it's just like a week away of knowing whether or not we're gonna be doomed or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't even like I can't even like get a mindset in in you know the potentiality that. Trump does win. I, I don't even want to think about it. I just don't even want to put that in my, the back of my mind. I'm just too afraid of what could actually happen if that if you were to win. So can't sleep, you know, just praying and wishing that it goes the way we expect it to. I think every American is praying and wishing that it hopes it goes the way they expect it to. Uh, yeah, especially Democrats, because man, this, um, I don't know if you guys watched it, I mean, I heard rumbles about it in the media about, you know, the Madison Square Garden event. I didn't really pay attention to kind of what was said. I just knew it was kind of like one of those things where it was like, you know, there was some racist things happening at Trump rally. And I was like, huh, eh, it happens every day at Trump rally, right? <laughs> it happens every day. <laughs> so it was like one of those, like, I'm blowing this off because it's just, it, it's, you know, after after a while you become immune to it. And then, um, I don't know, I think I was doing some work and seeing it was in the background. And I heard the guy talking and and I heard what he said about Puerto Rico. I was like, holy smokes. That's when to throw a missile in your campaign <laughs> week before yeah. the elections. Yeah, you know, what do you guys thought it about is, that? Um, it is surprising I, to me that this is this is taken off way more than like anything else that Trump has said. You know what I mean? It's not like he yeah. hasn't said things equally as bad. And it's not even Trump saying it. So the fact that this is he's getting so much flack for this is so little, honestly, surprising to me. Just because mm -hmm. we've he's survived everything else, like the Hitler comments last week, just sort of washed away. But this is this seems to be like actually affecting Pennsylvania, where there's what five hundred thousand Puerto Ricans. Oof. That's a big, big number. Well, like, yeah. Well, my first reaction was like. You pissed off Puerto Ricans and Haitian. Like, is he trying to lose Florida? <laughs> uh, true. Yeah, right. True. I I don't know. I mean, yeah, it seems like he is. I mean, the only Cuban group, the only those are the two biggest uh, minority groups in Florida. The only other group bigger than us is the Cubans. And, yeah, you know, which we, all, we know where they go. They go Republican. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but how is the vibe in Florida? I was like wondering because I was just. I, I would like, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, vibe is good. I mean, we're about to get pot passed. Um, that looks like it's on the trend to so we can have um, recreational marijuana, which we've passed it already years ago. The legislation. Oh, the, uh, oh. Yeah, the legislation. No, I, I the way, talking about medical marijuana, but yeah. Well, so the way Florida works is the citizen, we have citizen initiatives. So citizens can actually pass their own laws um, through ballot initiatives. And so we kind of passed the marijuana like years ago. And the legislature kind of went in and was like, yeah, we know you passed it, but we're going to tailor it so in a way where you really can't do it. And so we had to do another ballot initiative. Now this one's more, it expands the scope to like do more recreational marijuana. And that's going to pass. Um, and then abortion rights in Florida are not passed, which I don't know how that's going to work because if we have abortion rights now, those six weeks thing might come into question. But um, other than that, Rick Scott's winning. Uh, you know, 
And um, yeah. Trump's going to win Florida. He's up by nine points. Um, yeah. So we're counting the rest of you guys to get the job done because we're in Florida. It looks pretty bad. I, I feel I mean, like yeah. maybe I'm on the hopium, but I'm just like, wait, were those recent stats? Were those did those polls come out before or after Sunday? They, I, I imagine they came before Sunday, the polling, um, and I imagine that the polling will sway a little bit because minority voters tend to be late voters, and so it could definitely skew that vote. Uh, you guys are in these safe blue districts, though. It's like, like we know New yeah. York's going Democratic, and we know California's going Democratic. I'm the lone Democrat fighting these Republicans down here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Like, I think, like, honestly, I think people should listen to, like, Democrats in, like, red states more often. Because I think it's so easy to be in, like, this bubble, like, everyone agrees everyone with agrees. me. Friends agree with me. And I feel like just, like, the algorithmic media environment just doesn't help that anymore. So just having like yeah. Democrats and like red state saying, hey, no, this is like actually really serious. Like, please take this seriously. I think just yeah. give like a good reality check. Yeah. No, I 100% agree with you. I mean, that's kind of what we do. We're like, like I said, our, Florida is really good about activism. We're the only, we're one of the few states that we have a Republican led gov, uh, state, like in leadership wise, but we pass the most progressives like agenda things out there, like in referendums, like we're Republicans. Not necessarily state, we have economics, economics. I don't think, yeah, I think you're right, Seth. I don't think economically we're progressive enough. I think we're more like on, for example, marijuana passing. That's yeah. we're one of the few states that allow that. We're one of the few states that, well, we're going to have abortion it's rights. Out, yeah. Yeah. We have so there's a lot of things like you know we do that are progressive that most states don't do, but then that's why everyone says that Florida's the weird state because we we have Republican leadership, but we have all these Democrat policies that go through without them. Um, but yeah, we we're we're constantly in the fight with them. But you know we win some things, we win others. I mean. I've never seen it this red before. If that's what you, I mean, we've always been a purple state. Like this is the most red we've ever we've ever been, and um, so we're we're really hoping when people like Democrats in New York and California can come save us in this election because they're like, because we have to pass the wave of the Trump, the DeSantis. So we have that wave right now going, and hopefully they, when they're gone, we can do a little comeback. Um, I think we have some, we. We have some new leadership in the Democratic Party here in the state of Florida. So yeah. I think that, that will hopefully drive better candidates to hopefully flip the state. But I, we're talking yeah, about Nikki Tina Freed. Is, uh, she's, she's, a, she's a baller compared to, what was it, Manny Diaz? He was the Michael Bloomberg pick that was leading the party yeah. when we were running. That was pretty apparent yeah. how badly they did. The, the one year they pick him to run things, they have Charlie Chris, who loses by 20 points to Ron DeSantis. That was such a horrible election just horribly run just 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 focused on money not turnout not not talking to voters or appealing to their needs or anything like that it was just so bad in 2020 2022 you know i so. I, I can't explain 2022 2022 was crazy i just yeah i don't think no one's strategies really worked in 2022 like every other state had that blue wave or kind of like that yeah blue momentum we're the only state that did it and when it's like yeah. You know, and I think that what, like you said, um, Democrat leadership was the problem. It's always the problem in Florida. I mean, but only thing we can do is, you know, wait, let the wave. I mean, things swing, right? So, and yeah. you guys can see this right now in the politics. Like, one of the biggest fears that I have is we just had a Democratic elected president. Is he going to swing back right? Because as America, we tend to swing a lot. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that came out so wrong. We tend to swing. <laughs> sides a lot. Yeah, we tend to swing sides a lot. And so, at least in the independent mindset, I mean, progressives are progressives. But in the, for independence, they tend to waver uh, who they want to support. Yeah. Because Americans I mean, are me, very. Yeah. And I think, you know, 
Kamala, she's coming really strong this week. Kamala, right? Sorry. Yeah. I always call yeah. it Kamala, and everyone's like, no, it's Kamala. And it's like, I don't know. Yeah, you know what it is about her name? And correct me if I'm wrong, Nia. And so I think because I'm always used to seeing it pronounced that way, that like Kamala, it's really hard yeah. to say Kamala because it's a Kamala. different way of, different way of pronouncing it. Because I've always seen it pronounced Kamala, but you know, already... I remember the uh, the thing to remind you is Kamala Mamala. Kamala Mamala. It rhymes. I learned it. There you go. You can... I watched that Netflix show Never Have I Ever, and like, there's one character on there that's named Kamala. So like, I've watched oh. it so much. Oh, Kamala. <laughs> Have I ever? I've never heard that show. So Netflix. Never. It's yeah. It's like it's a Mindy Kaling show. I think it's her best show oh. actually. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Never, never ever. Ah. Never have I ever. Oh, okay. I see what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah I would recommend that show. It's really good. Speaking of shows, what is you guys' like favorite political show? My sister, uh, my sister put me on the scandal recently. I've been watching that, but I've not seen very much of it. But it's been really good so far. And yeah. you know, obviously, there was a time when House of Cards was was good to watch, but it's kind of, you can't rewatch it now that it's Kevin Spacey and you know all the shit he did. So, you know, see, well, and I haven't even like finished. I haven't. I watched everything except the last season of that show. I think. Yeah, same. I I'm invested. Yeah. Same. <laughs> Yeah. Like the last season of I didn't see. Yeah. So we can all take it that we've all seen House of Cards. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. At least the most of it, yeah. Most of it. How much do you think is really happening? I mean, it's pretty accurate in a lot of ways. I mean, there's a lot of dark shit in politics, at least in the last, you know, in the 70s and the 80s and 90s. Like, that's much more representative of what politics is like. You know, mm -hmm. way more corrupt than people let on. I don't know about all the murder stuff, but you know. I so like from like government officials, they say that like out of all the politics shows, like the closest one that fits them or fits their experience is Veep. And like yeah, watching, I, mean, I was like, okay, I can see what you mean. Like I, I can see the yeah. the vibe. Like really, yeah, and it's like kind of like a balance because there is like very like. It's like yes, horrible things happen in the Veep universe, but it's not right. as like dramatized as like a Scandal yeah. or a House of Cards. Yeah, but it's not like a happy show. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're one way public. Yeah, like uh, like a, yeah, go ahead. Oh, oh, I was just saying. I feel like uh, it's especially resonant with Kamala Harris being the nominee. You know. Going from mm -hmm. the vice president to the to leader of the party to you know, all this sort of stuff, and you know she's all a certain way in front of the cameras, but you know she'd be cussing out the annoying staffers and all that stuff, you know, behind the scenes, <laughs> you know what needs to be done. So, yeah. I think it's so, a, a good representation. Yeah, a hundred percent. So do you think? So my thing is. If Veep is more similar to politics, I mean, if, if I remember Veep correctly, like the VP, she was like one way in public and another way she's with her staff, right? Like you kind of articulate yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I guess my question then becomes how much of Donald Trump is Donald Trump and how much is Kamala is Kamala publicly versus their real selves? Hmm. I'm That's good. I mean, I feel like I feel like Trump is pretty out there, and you know, I feel like he's not too dissimilar. I think if anything, it's just a little bit more racist behind the scenes. You know, I don't. Yeah. You know, we are. It's not, like he hold, it's not like he hold back much in public either. So that's why I can't imagine it's too too dissimilar. But I mean, as we've heard from his, you know, top generals, the kind of stuff that he's willing to say behind the closed doors, you know, it's it insane. would shock you. Yeah. Like the whole, like the whole uh, Nazi thing. What my junior yeah. more like Hitler generals? Yeah, that's some crazy <laughs> shit. And people gloss over the part where he said, "Yeah, tri Hitler did some good things too." Like I feel like that's the worst thing to say than just wanting his generals. You know, he yeah. did say that too. So <laughs> yeah, which is insane. I think 
I think it's like funny um, for the Kamala question. Like I actually did meet her in real life once briefly. Yeah. <laughs> really? How was, it was that? It was cool. Like it was like in DC. So it was like years ago. This was like a year after, like maybe not even a year, maybe like a couple, a year, a couple months to a year after I graduated college. I was, I graduated from Howard like she did. <laughs> that oh. wasn't like, situation but, uh, <laughs> yes and we had homecoming the other week so yes um yeah. so like i would have like my first job but also i wanted to take another job so i could have spending money so like i was like instacart shopping while also like being a being a consultant full-time it was like a part-time instagram like part-time instacart shopper at like the whole foods on like 14th street in yeah. And like, so I was like doing my typical Instacart shopping. And then I just see a woman who looks like Kamala Harris. And I was just like, she was just like rushing from like the, if, so if you know the store, then like the, the entrance is on one end and then like the um, deli is on the other end. And yeah. so she's like rushing in the direction of the deli. Like she's like speed walking to the deli. And I was like, <laughs> wait, are you Kamala Harris? And she was like, yes. And I was like, Oh my god, that's so cool! Uh, can I take a picture with you? And she's like, "Yeah." And then I like whipped out my phone. I already had my phone in my hand because I was like Instacart shopping, so I was just like took the picture. Yeah. And like, yeah, that was a cool experience. But like, I, yeah. I think she was like very deep in some work, and was just gra rushing to get some food. <laughs> but like, she was chill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, so you have a uh, more insight than any of us on what she's like in person. You would think like someone in like a senator would go get their food grabbed for them. I guess. Yeah, yeah, true. And that's kind of one of those things where, you know, it's like, you, like I was saying earlier, like how much is really them versus what the persona is. And it seems like to me, she's more her persona than Trump. Because I think for yeah. Trump persona is just a strong man persona. He's acting. A lot of people don't realize he's acting, but he is acting in a position. Because he knows, okay, I got to be a strong man, so let me just act. And I think Camilla, she's very, um, how would I say, transparent. And it's kind of who she is. And I think that that can help her at times and that can hurt her at times because it's like, just like everybody, it's like all your friends and family. Not everybody like you when you're a certain personality, right? Like, yeah, if you're... If you're upset, your parents might not like you. If you're happy, your parents may like you. And we all have this thing where sometimes our character is really defined by the people around us and our perspective. And so I think with Camilla, she's so transparent that sometimes it comes off to some people like, oh, you know, something, she's just, she's not strong enough sometimes. And it's just, she's not this, she's not that, but we're just really saying that she's being transparent versus someone like a Trump who is just like, I have a, I have a, uh, how would I say, a role? And I'm gonna play that role. Yeah. I'm gonna say the most he plays his type. Yeah. yeah. And he plays to his base, which is the 35% the of people. And, and it works. Brings me back to the whole comment about Puerto Rico. Do you think that really Trump didn't have any involvement in that? Or he was just like, hey, I know Bad Bunny's coming to endorse Kamala, Kamala, excuse me. She's coming to endorse Kamala. So let's go ahead and have this comedian say this joke to offend these people. So my 35% base would actually be, um, will be kind of, how do you say, enraged, happy. I don't even know how to use the words that he does to his base. He kind of gets them like warmed up like soup or something. You I like? Yeah. Well, it kind of has to be because like, I yeah. think just overall, when you think of like the zeit, the political zeitgeist of like the past like eight or so years, it's like Puerto Rico is like such a random country to pick. Like after right? <laughs> all of like the ethnic groups and countries that Trump has insulted over the past eight years, like Puerto it's, Rico is a bit of a well, it doesn't make a that big of a appearance. I know there was like the hurricane and like he was throwing yeah. toilet paper at people, but like yeah. outside of that, it wasn't. It's not, doesn't make as many appearances. Exactly. And so it, it, it just seems like a lot of hmm? Oh, I was going to say, it's not even a country, too. It is It is part of the United States, which I don't even right. know how many Trump right. supporters even know that. So, and, well, Trump, and, Trump doesn't know that. I can, so. You know, of course, he's not very smart. 
but I can also <laughs> verify that he he did know about the comment because apparently they were holding back Tony Hinchcliffe from from using the c word to describe Kamala Harris, meaning they screened mm -hmm. his joke, so they knew what exactly. he was going to say and they were fine. And the, I found it very interesting how like half of his racist jokes didn't even hit with the, the crowd. Like people weren't even laughing. Like his own supporters weren't even laughing at those jokes. So, you know, I, I, it was just such a bad move. And I would find it just so gratifying if Tony Hinchcliffe was the person that sank Donald Trump. That would be, that. that's just the funniest way to go down, honestly. Yeah, that right. Be that'd just, be like a movie. That would be like a total movie. You know, talking about that certain, you know, group of people, do we mm -hmm. think, did you, first of all, did, did you guys see any bit of the Trump Rogan interview? And do you think Kamala Harris will end up doing it? And do you think she should do it? I never watched Joe Rogan, so no, I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's understandable. Yeah, I know. He's more of a guy thing. Like, I, he's like, I, saw like an, I saw like half of it. And I got you know, bored. I, it, it's, look, when I watch Joe Rogan, it's because I'm in this headspace, like, man, you, you know, I want to learn some crazy off the wall thing about, like, <laughs> Like you know, aliens. Like, <laughs> the only time I ever listen to Joe Rogan. It's not like they they know, political advice. <laughs> you know, I said, so, which they like, talked about. It didn't take long to talk about UFOs. You know, it did take long because that's who his base is. It's like, hey, yeah. you know, you're you're that guy who likes to talk about aliens, and it's like, yeah, sure. You know, so yeah. that's kind of who you're going for. Do I think she needs to do it? I think she definitely needs to do it. I mean, because, you know, at least some of the early polling is showing that she's struggling with um, African-American men and men, mm -hmm. just men in general. And I think that she needs to do that because, I mean, like we said, it's a man, mostly men watch it. And it's not like yeah. oh, the normal guy who watches it. It's that it's the weird, you know, guy that's into aliens who thinks the government's, you know, got secret spies all over the place. It's that guy. And so, and that guy's a voter. So it's like, uh, and I'm that guy too. Like I said, I watch it too. But I know the mindset I'm going in watching that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what I see is that that she has to do that. Because if you're hurting on the yeah. base, a group of men, people, you need to speak to them. In their language you know that's the one thing about politics it's just like you have to be a lot for a lot of people and mm -hmm. you have to understand that type of person and be able to communicate with them that's why trump did it because he's like yeah 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 there's i think there's some aliens I, I don't have any evidence of it but there were some things in the sky i saw when i was president you know and that that fuels people i, I don't know why little simple silly stuff like that fuels people but, you know, I think it just goes back to what everybody wants from the president. It's just a person that they feel like they can talk to, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that that's, I think she's doing a good job of that. I mean, honestly, I think that, you know, one of the things, if she loses this election, it wouldn't be because she didn't put in the work. Yeah, I mean, I definitely like, not. I get like 20 messages from her. She's like, are you donated? And I was like, I've donated already. I feel like a parent, like a parent yelling at me. It's like Nia, the time is now. Like yeah. Yeah. putting five dollars. <laughs> like this is urgent. So I was like, she I'm is like, very, she, I, got a, I got a text. Uh, I got a text and it was like, I heard a voter at uh uh it listed my old address has not registered to vote. I'm like, I don't live first of all, I don't live in Florida and how dare you? <laughs> like the fact that you're dropping my address in a text message is kind of creepy. So I, I, I'm ready for that to be done with. Um and back yeah, to like the but oh, I was gonna say I back mean, to the, the... <laughs> go ahead Jess well, finish your thoughts. No go ahead finish what you're saying. Oh I was gonna start a whole new thing. Okay uh, anyways <laughs> Back to the Rogan thing. Yeah. I think that, the, that she should because, first of all, the Rogan viewer is the kind of person that gets all of their politics from the Joe Rogan show. So they are very easily influenced by everything Joe Rogan oh, says and supports. They're the kind of voter that will go back and forth between Bernie and Trump, depending on which one was on last. 
Literally. That's true. Very true. <laughs> and and he's even said and his in which was I thought was very interesting because he was gassing up Trump the whole interview. But the one of the few parts he was pushing back was when he said, I would like to have Kamala on, and Trump was all like, Oh, you can't have her on this show. She would be she would be passed out. She can't handle this kind of thing. She would be have a heart attack or saying some crazy shit. And he was like, No, actually, yeah. I think we would have a good yeah. conversation. I I just want to get to know her. I wouldn't I wouldn't press her on this. I just want to, you know, have a genuine conversation, get to know her as a person. So it seems like mm-hmm. it, he would not be very, you know, conflicting towards any of her views, which is only going to make all the Joe Rogan viewers be like, oh, she's not crazy, because I, I don't think it would be a contentious interview. So, I, I mean, that, I, I don't see her. Go ahead. I think she's going to be a much better shit talker than people think. Like, Yeah, I mean, yeah. she is. Definitely. And I think no, I think I that's kind of what they're looking for. I definitely, yeah. I think, Mia, you're 100%. I feel like she just went, okay, I had a perspective, uh, perspective of her before she was a nominee i just didn't like her yeah you know and then but that's when she, she also ran against people i'd like like um yeah what's his name i have to see don't like andrew yang that, no not andrew yang the guy from new jersey people from new jersey senator yeah. oh ball head corey oh, corey booker Corey there it is, Corey Booker. Oh, Corey Booker. Oh, I actually Man. liked him. You know, yeah, I liked him, and I thought he would be a good president. But you know, you have to be married. It's kind of one of those prerequisites. Yeah, that people don't tell you. It's like, hey, you can run for president, but you better be married because people are going to be. You know what? I think we should probably like. I feel like maybe the first like bachelor. No, actually, the second because there was a bachelor president. Just like way, way. Oh way yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. But um, I think the second bachelor president, I think, could be like a millennial because, like, we're all getting married like a lot older, or people are just forgoing yeah. marriage. Kids. That's true, that's like, true. I think it's in line with very key demographic changes with like millennials and Gen Z. So, like, yeah. and I think people are like, thinking, I think, beyond like the con or thinking of models of adulthood beyond like marriage and kids and everything. Not saying that's yeah. bad, the option is there, but I think um, people are making other options. No, I definitely think marriage is becoming challenged. I mean, um, as you know, I mean, the union is union. It doesn't matter if it's a man or a man or a man or a woman. It doesn't matter as long as you have a union. You know, that's really what I mean, matters. And and I I think that that's what people want to see is a union. I mean, bachelor thing, I think it's kind of cool because really that'd be the first, the president is dating. It's like that one movie. Like, to see that. That would be so relatable <laughs> to me. All right. The president Dude, of like the media, bachelor. Right? Yeah. No, not like the bachelor, but like imagine like seeing like the president on like Raya. <laughs> like you're just flipping well, through Raya. Cool. And you see the president. Yeah, right. It's like, hey, <laughs> man, you'd be like, I went to Harvard, I got a 4.0. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I like this prospect. You know, I get to see him like, you know, it's I, just like. Oh, someone said, what's your, what's your job industry? They say your industry is like, oh, government, nonprofit. And it's just like regular <laughs> thing. The president just regular yeah. data. Man, it's going to be hard to date someone. He's like, man, look at his qualifications. You know, because you're looking at him like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> look a at that. You're on a dating app and you're just like, see the president. You like, 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 you're just like, oh, fuck it. I'll like swipe right. Yeah. And then, like, it matches. It's like, oh, uh oh, <laughs> that, yeah, that would be rough. Yeah. That'd be cool. That, that would be cool. I feel like, um, I feel like it would, it would almost have to be a Republican, though. Maybe not. I'm just thinking of the fact that, like, think about how oh, I'm just thinking, like, think about the fact how, how quickly conservatives are willing to drop their traditional notions when the th- three times divorce guy who you know talks about, yeah. you know. Having objectifying affairs. women, all these, all these different things. How little they really care. How can they possibly be Republican? So the, first, right? that, so the first bachelor president is going to be a Republican who matches with the hot to a girl on a dating app. <laughs> <laughs> so the first bachelor guy cannot be a guy who's been married three times, who's had multiple affairs, you know, who refers to grabbing women in an improper way. Like I can't imagine a president ever doing that. Yeah. And, Get the joke, Trump. 
No, I know. I'm just, uh, it's just more sad than anything. More sad yeah, than funny. Well, it's, well, it's true. It's like, we never thought we were ever see a president. Think about the amount of scrutiny Barack Obama got for being Hussein Barack Obama. <laughs> yeah. And being, just in the name alone. And it was yeah. like, never, no affairs, no nothing. Perfect wife, perfect two children. And it was like, he wore a tan suit and it was like a national emergency. Like what's going on here? Why is the president wearing a tan suit? And now this guy gets to walk around and be like, Oh, you know what? I can call this woman ugly. I can, you know, do this. I can do that. I can do that. And I'm like, yeah, nothing happens. <laughs> and it's like, I, oh. I think that's okay. Uh, were you going to say you miss Obama? Cause I no, I was going to say, I miss like the, uh, I miss when politics were, was professional. To some was. Degree. Yeah. I miss professionalism of like pre 2016 politics yeah i just think that 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 kind of uh, goes to my point though it's like you know republicans can get away with anything you know but the second Mm -hmm. that there's like a minor anything misstep of any sort of way it's like a major controversy which is why i don't think a democrat could get away as easily with being the bachelor president or whatever you know just look at how unfairly or I I don't want to say unfair because obviously the media has a liberal slant, but Mm -hmm. you know, they're judging, Oh, she did this, blah, 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 blah. And then they're kind of gloss over everything insane 10 times extreme that Trump says, because it's just sort of, it's just the way he is, you know, they kind of get away with whatever. So I I don't know. Also on some level, I think it's because like Republicans never self-criticize. And I think like liberals are very self-critical. So when Yeah. something then it's like not only do you have like republicans criticizing them but democrats consider criticize them and i think like yeah. honestly like liberals i think i consider myself just like kind of a progressive just like riding that line and i can get into like yeah. why in a, in a second but like i think that liberals are way too lawful for their own good like i think sometimes yeah you let a little bit more things slide because like too much humility it's not that big of a deal <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. Al Franken, maybe he's a prime example of what you guys are talking about. He gave up his seat, and it's like he was thinking that, hey, you know, my jokes and then you know were inappropriate and stuff like that, so I have to abdicate my seat at the Senate. And he's like, bro, Trump gets elected a couple years later. You're like, bro, this guy does like ten times more stuff. And yeah. he's like, okay, Americans don't care. Like, and I yeah, just- yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, like, I think the dedication to following being so by the book. I think also like aids and abets like a lot of the crazy shit Republicans do. Like I think yeah. even like the best example is like the media. Like I'm not sure if you saw that like clip with like um, Charlemagne and like yeah. Anderson Cooper and like Charlemagne was like rightfully mm. criticized Anderson Cooper for like and like generally like the media establishment for like kind of sane washing Trump by like treating him like yeah. every other candidate instead of just yeah. like really just telling it like it is and being like, hey, this guy's crazy. <laughs> but like. Yeah. But but going about it like it's normal makes crazy things feel not crazy. <laughs> I think the media is trying to like they already know everybody knows there's a liberal slant, so they're trying to like work against that as if Republicans aren't going to accuse them that as conservative as they will act if they go as far right as possible, they're still going to be the the corrupt liberal CNN. So they might as well just act like it. You know they may and- as well if you look at the more popular show is like the Daily Show. They just double down on being what they are. You know, mm-hmm. it's way. That's I don't know. You get also, what I'm saying. Also, it's just like the Republicans are in Delulu land. Like yep. I think if you can just report the facts straight, it's going to like, I guess in a conservative mind, is going to lean liberal because these people don't live in reality. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree with you. I think that well, uh, that could be a whole podcast in itself. And uh, yeah. speaking of that. Before I, I'm going to stop that thought and go to another thought. That could be a podcast. I saw, um, it was recently this week, the Washington Post didn't endorse a candidate. You guys hear about that? Yes. Yeah. It's like the first time in like, the history of the Washington Post that has ever happened. And it made me think, like, what you guys are saying about the bias of media and the left, the right, it's like... The, they know we all knew what's supposed to be probably gonna endorse Kamala, Kamala, and and I'm gonna get that eventually right. When she, when I say Madam President, I don't have to worry about it anymore. There you go. <laughs> so 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we all know that they're they were gonna uh, endorse her, but what what did he do? He killed the story and was like, no, you're not endorsing anybody. You're not. Yeah, it was Jeff her- Bezos, right? Jeff Bezos. He yeah. owns the Washington Post. So, and and, so, and I think that it goes to show like. Um, and I think this is similar with the pollsters. I feel like they're hedging their bets in the case that Trump does win because they are, don't want to lose their power. They don't want to be directly att- attacked. As somebody who's openly against free speech and wants to take away NBC's <laughs> broadcasting rights or something when they report against him, like they're 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 afraid that if they go too far in the left direction, that they're going to lose all their money and all the investors are going to lose you know their their investments or whatever. So I I think that this goes to show for one thing. I said the pollsters, I feel like they're kind of like, you know, boosting the numbers in a certain way to make it look like it's Trump's, you know, Trump is more in play than he is. And maybe that's to drive Democratic turnout. Maybe there's a lot of different conspiracy theories as to why that could be. But Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think that we are being presented the race accurately as it is. Did you hear about that like scandal um, with, it's not even, I'm not sure if it's even considered a scandal, but there was like this report that like apparently like Remusen and like the Trump campaign are like colluding possibly. Wait, Who? Who? And, oh, Rasmussen? I mean. Yeah, Rasmussen. Who's that? Didn't, Didn't we know? always know that? Like, I, I don't know. Like, I was just like, <laughs> I heard about that and I also heard like and also like I haven't like looked into it that deeply so like don't hold me to it but like I also heard that there are like a lot of like small like right-leaning pollsters like a disproportionate amount that's like kind of skewing the averages. Mm -hmm. Well Rasmussen's always been a more conservative poll but I I think that this conspiracy. Oh okay you guys talking about Rasmussen poll. Oh yeah. Yeah Yeah. okay. I think I think it goes oh, both directions. Yeah. I feel like Trump wants to flood the, the polls with, uh, you know, con- first of all, obviously, because he only believes polls that he likes. He's admitted that he sees a poll yeah. that is goes this direction. He believes it goes the other direction. He doesn't believe it. But there, I also think that the more that Republicans believe that Trump is ahead, the easier it is for them to convince them that it's a rigged election when it goes the opposite direction. So I think, yeah, so both ways. That's, like, that's why people think that's that's why people think that like that's the reason behind all these like small pollsters it's not rasmussen but it's like apparently a bunch of yeah. small like right-leaning pollsters that are skewing the that are there to skew the averages like, to, like poly market oh my <laughs> god don't even get me started like i like again like i don't hate crypto like i work in crypto like i have a i am raising it i am raising a dap an investment dow i am like yeah. probably one of the few like like non-crypto hating progressives <laughs> and like, we can get into that yeah. as well but um i just think just like one like i just never think betting markets are just like accurate or like it's not no. an accurate same proportion like most gamblers are men <laughs> like it's, it's also a confirmation oh, that's not true that is not true oh yeah i, it is. I like I I don't don't who, it. who uh, did WNBA. uh got into the gambling there I mean, but you're right you're, you're probably right i'm just joking around yeah <laughs> it's yeah, 90 but, 10 you know yeah, it's like, like, it's not like women don't gamble but like with like is it because it's stupid what yeah Men is that stupid. why women don't gamble because huh. i think because it's just stupid you guys think it's stupid i don't think it's yeah men are stupid it's- it's just, it's, just, it's, just not, it's just not my preferred form of entertainment. It's like, also, it's just like part of it was like also like antidotal. Like, I don't hear my girlfriends talking about like, hey guys, did you hear what was on Poly Market today? Like, no one yeah. talked about yeah. that. So like, that was like my first hunch. But then I just like went and just like searched the internet for data just to like prove whether or not that's true. But like, just doing like a quick like perplexity search, it's like mm-hmm. it, it says men gamble significantly more than women. Approximately sixty nine percent of men engage in gambling compared to thirty six percent of women in the U S. Men are more I likely to experience gambling problems. <laughs> but oh, but um we lost another one. <laughs> but the gambling preferences like vary by gender. So like women who do gamble tend to like um lower risk gambling like lotteries and bingo whereas yeah. like men like the strategy based games like sports betting so it's oh, like oh yeah yeah we, we we're, we're, i'm not gonna lie i went to vegas and i was like i was in vegas but i hate gambling 
So it was kind of like yeah, silly because I was like, you know what? I said, all right, I'm saying I hate gambling because I do gamble, but I don't gamble like I gave him like 20 bucks. Yeah. So I was like, I'm not a real gambler. It's like, yeah, I lost 20 bucks. We went back to the hotel. Let's get the free drinks. You know, <laughs> it's one yeah. of those things. But, but um, yeah, but crypto is a very, here, I've had people tell me crypto is the greatest thing. You know, I've heard people say it's the stupidest thing. I fall in the middle. Like, look, there are parts of it that's more of a commodity trading. I mean, I I understand that part of it. And for people who don't know com- commodity trading, it's just an, when you have uh, tangible, oh, Jesus, I'm too much of a lawyer. When you have something that's value, because I was going to say tangible assets, but that's it. Um, when you have something of value that you, you assist these exchange, like currencies of value and other things, which crypto is, it makes sense. Because if people value crypto, you, you obviously can make money off the value, people's belief. Yeah. In, you know, uh, but to use it as my main form of payment, I just go back to economics 101. It's like, you know, governments make money, you know, and our belief in that government is what gives that money power. And yeah. so that's why I've always been on the kind of like, I like crypto, but I don't understand it. And I could be because yeah. I'm an Asian baby. And, you know, I feel like when you're in the 1980s, we, our generation had AOL. Like, <laughs> like that's how old I am. Like, we're the first one with computer and internet. Right. Like, first home internet. You know, so crypto for me is so complicated because I'm like, yeah, I remember I, I tell people this all the time. I started with pen and paper, and then I went to a computer. Yeah. <laughs> so, what well, do you guys ever I mean, think that, in that range too, You know, huh? We're, we're we're so we're still old enough. We're in that range too, but like just on the precipice. Yeah. You know, I I still yeah. had the giant box computers and all that shit too. So, but yeah. do you think that would ever yeah. be like a recognized international currency, crypto? Like, like possibly. Really? Like possibly, I think it's like different. I think the difference is that instead of putting faith in the government, you're putting faith in like a particular like, um, like foundation protocol code. So like you're more so putting because like it's all kind of set. It's all programmatically set by the code, like the amount of supply, like yeah. the deflation rate if there is one, and like all that, all the other stuff. It's in a smart contract, and that's what allows it to be operate without a government. Is that mm-hmm. like? You're putting faith in the code. <laughs> yeah. So, has there been like, since you guys know more crypto than I do, is there like a leading code that's like, that's oh, like, like the, the rest of them? Because I feel like there's so many different systems out there in crypto. So right, right like, now, I would say the most popular, like the two most popular is like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Yeah. So like Bitcoin is like totally like, permissionless like the guy who made it is anonymous and no one knows who the fuck he is and it's just kind of like the wild wild west Mm -hmm. um and then like ethereum is like run by like the ethereum foundation and like is like up and is like updated and has like a whole voting dow and an organization that votes on like the standards and stuff um the guy who founded it his name is vitalik you can find him on twitter um and that's, I think, the more like popular one that like are the one that people are willing to build on and put faith into is like the Ethereum system. So like most like consumer crypto apps at this point are like built on like Ethereum or like a L2 of Ethereum. So they so to explain it short, it's like there's a blockchain and yeah. that's the L1. That's like when you think of like Bitcoin, Ethereum. Like that's what would be like the main chain, but there are side chains because like the main chain at scale, the gas fees got too expensive for the main chain for the main chain. So you have all these side chains that are like basically trying to defray the cost of a transaction in the main chain by bundling a bunch of chains to by bubbling a bunch of transactions together and putting yeah. it in one transaction on the main chain. That would be an L2. So like a good chunk of the L2s that people are building on in crypto are Ethereum based. But like Solana, from what I hear is like Solana is like another L1 that is like catching up, that seems to be like catching on with the consumer 
crypto space, which is the space I do. Like, so I'm not so on the commodities trading side. I'm more on like the how can we make social fairer for creatives? How can we like yeah. how can we make it so that like users own their data and like the platforms don't? So we have like a more fairer relationship between user and platform. So in case like there's another Elon Musk situation, <laughs> we can all yeah. take our data take our posts, take our friends and leave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's, I mean, that, that's, that, that sounds more responsible. I, because here's the thing, I feel like we're moving into society and sorry, I'm going to get um, pretty idealistic here that we're moving to a society where we're more international. And so we are, and I think we're trying to fight away of the old system and trying to debunk it with ideas such as cryptocurrency and UBI, um, because the whole system just doesn't work for the technological era that we live in. And so the reason why I'm fascinated with crypto is because I, I just see it as a just another medium of us trying to connect the whole world. And I just want to, and I guess my only take about it is I don't see it really being adopted by governments like that, outside of like, you know, the islands. Like the Bahamas and stuff like that, I haven't really seen it been adopted by mass government to connect us all together into this cryptocurrency. Yeah, and I think that's like very far off. I think like also governments never adopt like tech super fast yeah, anyway. That is true. Like, that is they don't have a best interest in doing so. And like I was doing like digital transformations in like the 2010s, and it's just like it's so like there's just so many layers and so many rules on top of rules on top of rules on top of rules that it's like literally like, it's like really, really hard to get like anything done in a reasonable amount of time. Like government consulting projects will be like 10 years plus and it will still be going. That is so inefficient. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just think about like when um, Mark Zuckerberg did that congressional um, hearing and they asked him, I was like, hey, how do you make your money? And I'm like, you're a sitting US senator. You know how Facebook makes money? <laughs> it's like. Oh, yeah. God. Are you talking about, um, I think, Orrin Hatch? Said they that? were going Hatch. Yeah. yeah, I was like. Yeah. I was like, I was like shocked. I was just like. I was shocked. <laughs> were you really shocked, though? Because it's he's like 90 years old. Like, but you know. Know. he's but a it's, senator. <laughs> but it's like, how are you? Like, I think it's like. Oh, senator. It's like, I don't want to you know, sound like an but at the no same way. time, I think this is why people say, like, push back on the gerontocracy in government because it's just like if you're not going to be up to date with what's going on with like most Americans, then it should be I mean, think about Chuck Austin. Grassley. Pardon? So think about Chuck, Chuck Grassley. Grassley. Yeah. Oh my God. Have you ever read his tweets? Have you ever <laughs> have you seen what he does on a day to day basis? Like that's yeah, yeah. he's got his little farm, and you know he he's tweeting his. I don't know. I can't even like summarize how like ridiculous his tweets are worded, but you know, this guy's 92 years old and you know, he's still representing people who are new voters in Iowa. Like, I don't understand. Like we need to have some sort of cap. On, we do. You know, if you, you know, if, if a 17 year old can't vote, why does, why does Jimmy Carter get to vote at, uh, you know, he's not even able to, like, I'm just saying like, it's I hear what you're gotta saying. it's gotta be gotta do something the problem is look at the end of the day it's like me like i know my lane right so like hip-hop like i well stuff is more of a pick up hip-hop head than i am but i'm more not listening to hip-hop but i know like i'm a 90s 2000 Ja Rule probably ended it for me in 50 cent era <laughs> in 2010 and now uh. You know, I know that's my lane. Like, I'm not going to yeah. try to be in the lane of, like, who's the new rappers now? I don't even know. I'm in the same lane as you. I don't I'm really, not going to lie. Yeah, I don't even know their names anymore. So it's like, that's my Lil lane. Lil Uzi Vert was the last one for me. See, I like, feel like I like follow this. more so female rappers now. So, like, Glorilla, yeah. Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah, yeah so that's. I'm with you on that. I'm like following more female rappers than I'm following male rappers, which is kind of weird, but they're just, their music is better. So, yeah, well, they're, they're, all, they're all making the new, like, I do feel like you guys summarize that. I feel like the new rappers are more the female rappers coming out. Like, you know, yeah. I mean, 
I still listen to older rappers and new albums, but like, you know, I, I feel like hip hop has changed in that direction because there's such a, like a, a void to be filled. Like there wasn't a big f- female hip hop artist, you know, yeah. so just all the new ones coming out are kind of being way bigger. I don't know. It just sounds they're, they're talking about stuff that like, cause I feel like as a men rapper and I could be wrong, but we've been listening to the same stuff for like 50 years. Like what? Am, yeah. Then yeah. I'm not going to rap about anything that, we don't we haven't thought about since 1960. <laughs> it's like yeah. when you think about it, like you know, even the rappers they're rapping stuff that they were talking about in the 60s. You know, the, the only difference is in the 60s, they just can't say it blatantly. And yeah. nowadays it's blatantly. And so now I just feel like the women rappers, no one's really heard that before, you know. Yeah, like exactly. a woman's like, even though it's some crazy stuff sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. I listen to some lyrics, yeah. I'm like, yo, he's like, take us for it. But, I forgot one rapper said this. Like, Taking for a thousand dollars, and then, and then leave. <laughs> like what? I was like, wait, wait a minute. He's <laughs> like, so it, it's a little ratchet, but it's still like their their voice, you know. And it's kind of yeah. what's going on in the NBA right now, the WNBA. Yeah, like, yeah, like they're they're getting their voice because they've been silent for so long, and that's why I think Kamala Kamala is yeah so bad. See, I try to get it, but she full <laughs> circle, full circle, and that's why yeah. I think that she has the opportunity. And I told my wife, and I told um, uh, our mother in law that she's gonna be a, the first black female president. That to me, female president, not because, <laughs> not because it's just you know, she has a whole bunch of checks she can make, it's the yeah, the. For me, it's the representation that we've come. Perspective. Yeah, we've come a long way. You know, we yeah. have like 48 white presidents. No offense, Seth. White people are cool. Yeah, <laughs> <understand>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I said 48, which is a completely wrong because there's only been 44 presidents or 44 yeah. or 45. But what I'm saying is, majority, not 80%, have been white. And you know we finally have Barack Obama, which is great. I thought we have Hillary. You know she, you know, we're not going there. <laughs> and so, and now we have Kamala. Um, there you go. And I think to me, this is a great opportunity. Not because you know we want to check another box, but it's just because she is qualified. Like, can no one? I mean, at the end of the day, what we're gonna say is like, she was a United States senator. She was an attorney general. She is vice president of the United States. She has more mm-hmm. qualification than Trump does. <laughs> like, let's oh. just face it. You know, so if we're going to say, hey, I mean, she's not qualified, that doesn't make any sense. You know, like, yeah. so you can't say that. Like she's way more qualified. And so I feel like we have a great, women have a great moment right now. And I'm speaking especially to women on the podcast because. I got. I heard this with Hillary Clinton, and I saw the exit polls with Hillary Clinton. She lost a lot of women voters, which it's on the women voters to step up, to step up for Kamala, because. Yeah. Like, did you this, see like, the polls? Like, I think she's like polling very high with women. Or, yeah, or white women specifically women. too. Like, I think yeah. she, I think Democrats are winning white women for the first time since like Eisenhower. And like even yeah. and even Trump has been losing white men too. So people we, we over accentuate like, oh, Trump is gaining with Hispanic and black voters, but he's losing with white voters, which constitute a way bigger majority of people, especially in the swing states. Yeah. So I mean, I you know, it gives me a lot of hope, you know. It does. I mean, he's winning with black voters because at the end of the day, what's happening in the black community has really it's twofold. The black community has one been disenfranchised by the Democratic Party, and I've always said this. We we disenfranchised a lot of black voters for many years and a lot of their issues, mm-hmm. and and that's within ourselves as a party that we have to fix. Um, I don't think it's more so Kamala's problem. I think as a Democratic Party, that's our problem because we've been we've kind of put black men in the party, kind of like your issues really don't matter. 
you know, and that's why they've been kind of navigating towards the Republicans, not because of Kamala, because of years of bad policies that we have mm-hmm. put enough emphasis on, like prison reform, like, you know, putting education in minority communities, putting funding and education programs in minority communities and taking care of, you know, African-American men, you know, just like we do in every other racial group. You know, and I think that that's the problem. But, you know, I see us as black leaders, including myself, that we need to emphasize and let black males understand that, hey, this party that Trump, the year one, to be a part of, they have done zero for African American men. You know, they've done zero in terms of want to provide resources, not just African-American men, the poor white men, poor white men, African-American men, you know, just a my, poor minority. They've done zero. They're I think zero is giving them too much credit. I feel like they yeah. get, you know, negative there, the negative only, mark. Yeah, they only care about one group. And I tell this to Jenny all the time. Trump, 60% of Republicans don't even know the Democrats. No, because for sure. Because sixty percent of Republicans, they're Democratic. They're not Republicans. Republican Party is only thirty percent of the Republican Party. Because the thirty yeah. percent that's Republican are the high, high earn, uh, net income earners, and so they yeah. favor tax breaks and favor little government so that they can maximize their profits. So mm-hmm. when we start talking with minority groups and specific groups be like, oh, the, the Democrat Party is not doing enough for me. Well, the Republican Party, if they were true to the idealisms, do nothing for you either. So your yeah. job is to find the best candidate that can, who would do the best they possibly can for your community. And I think I think she embodies that. I mean, if you ask me, he's already talking about giving a 6,000 child tax credit for newborns. That is so beneficial to a lot of african-american families when they mm-hmm. you know when they come out because it's like i had a baby and i know it's called and i have insurance and i know how expensive it is it's it's in the tens of thousands of dollars and then imagine you have a yeah. newborn and that's the first thing you have to worry about is a medical bill mm-hmm. like and that that has more of an impact on a minority community than any agenda that trump's gonna pass because all Trump is talking about doing, hey, let's 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 let me give more tariffs. Let me go. Let's give them a tax break. And it's like, like if people even listen to what he says, it's like he's never going to pass these things. He's just saying, yeah. It's like, and that's a good I, thing he won't pass them because they would be decimating to the exact interests that people think that they would be benefiting from. Like I literally grew up in the the most rural of maybe not the most rural, but very rural area, very Trump support signs everywhere, Trump supporters. If you if they really like followed through with their own interests and the own the things that they value, they would be voting for Kamala Harris. Like like they don't even realize what Trump actually stands for. They talk about smaller government, free speech, defending this, defending that, all those things Kamala Harris does better. Because and, yeah. and you can start to show out with like the the Liz Cheney demographic of people who are you know, Republicans voting for a Democrat for the first time. Also, yeah. a lot of guys consume way too much porn to jive with what the Republicans are planning. Yeah. <laughs> it's 2025? Yeah. That's good. That's good. They should just really just run on like, Trump will take your porn away. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That'd be like the greatest sign. <laughs> I was Did you see that one ad where there were? There was there was some actually the very like graphic ad of, of like some guy like doing his thing and a Republican senator mm-hmm. like takes his phone. It was very <laughs> like overt and like literally what they would be doing. Like how would you even enforce a policy like that? Are you gonna start uh, monitoring like television shows if they're too graphic? Like talk about free speech. You want the government to start monitoring what TV shows are allowed to show you? Come on. I no. think. I think like everyone jokes on the internet about having like an NSA agent watching them. I feel like to yeah. enforce that porn thing, it's like that the NSA thing would have to be real. Yeah. yeah. I, and you know, we'll uh, talk about authoritarianism. Like 
doesn't get more overt than that. Well, I mean, look, you. I think you're you hit the nail. You hit around the nail now, uh, Mia. Like most Democrats, if you say you're gonna lose your point, you lose Republican and Democratic votes. Because <laughs> those, I was watching this. Uh, uh, actually, it was Joe Rogan. The guy yeah. went in there. It was no, it wasn't Joe Rogan. It was Patrick. The value ten. The value ten. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it was, I know It's kind of similar to Joe mm-hmm. Rogan, but he has yeah. like a business. It's like a business line to it. So yeah. I was watching that show, and he had the guest of, um, I think it was the CEO of Pornhub, right? And he's like, I think he said some crazy number. Like, they have, like, a billion, like, impressions a day. Yeah. That's As, like, a day. And I'm like, so... I'm like, man, that's a huge industry, and it can't be all Democrats. <laughs> that's <No>. like, <laughs> man, that's a huge industry, and so I just want to see how the Democrats, um, the Democrats and Republicans, like the fact that Project 2025 is going to take all that away from them. <laughs> yeah, you well, but they won't acknowledge that Project 2025 is a Trump policy, as we've discussed, and it's just so insane the level of scrutiny they're willing to look at everything Kamala Harris does. But then like Mm -hmm. the second that Trump says anything, even though you could verifiably prove all these different things, they just go along with whatever he says, but then they'll go on this, you know, they're the, they're the transvestigators, you know, they're fucking looking at every single detail of every single person on the other side to find dirt on them. But they, they, they won't look at the fact that Trump was buddies with Diddy and buddies with Epstein. And he was held, you know, financially liable in a civil suit for rape all this stuff like they'll just pretend like it does not exist no one even pretend they will just block it out of their brain funny is when Maggie's talk about epstein and i'm just like they're yeah. like yeah this person's with epstein i'm like your your candidates with epstein and they'll just like deny it and i'm just like his name is on the flight logs <laughs> yeah oh he just yeah. he didn't know he didn't know about that oh he's you know he's yeah. a good guy once he found out what he was doing that's when he stopped going They'll still just create excuses for them left and right. And they make the same excuses when it comes to the Hitler comment thing. Like every single mm-hmm. Trump official, oh, he was fired. So he just is, you know, he they're all mad at Trump. All the every single person that ever worked with Trump says bad things about him when they stop worrying about him. You you know, there was a large controversy of the turnover in the Kamala Harris campaign in 20 uh 2020. Mm-hmm. How many of those staffers are talking about her is a secret communist? And she's a secret, you know, all the things, all the equivalent side of the accusations they're making against her. Nobody, nobody says mm-hmm. that about Kamala Harris. They used to work with her, even if they had a bad relationship, you know, it, it's, it's just does not become more overt of how horrible of a man this, this guy is. Yeah, I mean, I, but the thing with Trump is I think people know he's horrible. And I think that they yeah, don't care. They don't care because I think for them, they think the presidency doesn't have an effect on their lives. They just, it hasn't they just, so far, yeah. and then I think that's why people vote for people like Trump because they're like, yeah, he's funny, he's comical, and yeah, he can't really do anything. And that's how they take their approach with him. It's yeah. like, but he can do a lot. You know, like, people don't realize how much he can really do. Oh, it yeah. is like, you know, he's. They don't realize because they're the white people that are not affected by it. Just ask a Muslim person who should be in, you know what I mean? The, the Muslim ban or like the Latino, my friends texting me, don't vote for Trump because like my family is going to get deported. Like there's the people yeah. facing these consequences realize this and aren't voting for him. But, you know, they're, yeah. they're being protected. They're not, nothing's ever going to affect them because they're in the majoritarian demographic. So, yeah. So yeah, man. So you guys gotta get out and vote. I mean, this is very yeah. important election. I don't know what you guys are gonna do next week. I know that Tuesday is the actual election. So oh yeah, you know, we'll figure out a date that we're gonna come on. Uh, maybe before, maybe not during, because uh, but maybe before. Maybe we can time in when the results are coming in and then, you know, yeah, I think, I think maybe like the next day, we're still not going to know what's happened, but we're going to have a sense of a direction, you know, most likely we're going to be like, all right, looks like Kamala's winning, but we still are terrified and we can sort of cover from there on. But 
you know, I'm yeah. the yeah, the day of I'm definitely gonna be drunk the whole day. I just don't wanna <laughs> don't wanna yeah. deal with it. I'm gonna go to my I'm just gonna go smoke a bunch, watch a happy yeah. movie, go to sleep, wake up. And like have the Apple News alert tell me whatever they need to tell me. I wish well, I could do that. I'm going to be obsessively watching the numbers, and it's going to be terrible. I guarantee. Uh, I guarantee. You're you're way better than us, Mia. I'm going to be looking. It's going to stress me out. Okay, it's just going to freak me out every time like a state gets called for Trump. It's going to just stress me out, and I know myself, so I'm just going to go. And well, we know it's 13. 13 is going to be called for. 13 states is going to go to. So yeah. It's the seven that's on the top. Where what seven are we? We have to really look at state Nevada. We got Nevada, North Carolina, Michigan. yeah, Wisconsin. I mean, this is insane. It's like North Carolina, they're tied. This is I've never seen that. I don't believe it. Wisconsin, they're tied. Definitely Michigan, don't believe that. Michigan, she's pulling ahead. Maybe yeah. in some ways ever tonight. I, think so. I was believing. Oh, I, I was going to say I I would believe that Trump would win Pennsylvania until the Puerto Rico thing. So now I'm now I'm back to that could go either way. Really, I was thinking yeah. that. I don't know. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm too much on the hopium. What, what do you think? I mean, think? now I am now I'm now I'm back on that train. Now I think she's going to win Pennsylvania, but. I, I always thought that she was going to win Pennsylvania. That may be a contrary yeah. point. I was more worried about Michigan, to be honest. Ooh. Yes, I, I, I don't. I'm not honest. Being from Michigan, I don't see that as being a possibility. Like, be even, you know, I know that there's the Muslim vote and stuff like that, but the polling has has been pretty consistently, you know, plus four, plus two to her. Like, even when it gets tight, it's still like a majority of them leaning towards it. And, you know, I I also think that, like, people are worried about the the arab vote but like they're not all the muslim vote they already work republican leaning to an extent like only a quarter of the arab voters are actually muslim most of them are arab christians who are already republican voters there you know and yeah. a lot of muslim voters were already more socially conservative and all the stuff anyway so I, I i don't think that it's gonna pull away from her as much people as people think like i don't think that they would otherwise go for kamala harris so I, I think that that's it's understandable that they would assume that. But at the end of the day, like, especially with the you, you saw the Rudy Giuliani comments about mm -hmm. Palestinians. I think at the last second, a lot of people are going to realize the stakes. And I think that they've been kind of capping about, you know, who they're preferring because they want her to change her policies to cater to the pro-Palestinian vote before the election. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they, they, they're not stupid enough to think that Trump would be better. So I, I think at the end of the day, Michigan's be safer than people think. It's Nevada and Arizona, which I think are most likely to go for Trump because you know their borders, they're closer to the border. Uh, I see, there's let's see Nevada, you said Arizona. Nevada, like, I think Arizona yeah, will yeah, go for Trump. I well, one poll in Arizona, he's up by four, but another yeah, poll, I mean, it's a tie. Um, you said Arizona. Yeah. yeah I think Arizona, Georgia can go the other way. Georgia always goes. Oh, well, I think Georgia goes Republican. To be honest with you, that's my. Yeah, statement. I could go either way. Nevada, North Carolina, North Carolina. I also think Mark, Mark Robinson is going to talk in. But I heard the early turnout for Georgia has been very, very good, and like. Good. Yeah, for the yeah. Okay. And a lot. I guess there was a lot of new people who registered too. Oh, okay, that yeah. no, that can sway. That can sway. I think that North but, Carolina, North Carolina's going Democrat. I don't think they're going. to I think so too. And the the thing about Georgia that concerns me is, you know, they've got a history of just weird voters. The day before the election, yeah, you're just like, oh, you're you're actually not registered. We took you off the, you know, the we took you off the list. You know, there there there's some sketchy stuff with the Secretary of States and stuff like that. But they there was also a concern about like. The false elector um, scheme and the courts actually ruled in favor of Democrats in Georgia that they can't like reject the uh, the voter count just because they want to. So I, I yeah. think those kind of decisions are really the ones that are going to sway the actual, you know, the presidency, not even the election results. Because I, like I said, I think the 
Harris will win the electoral vote, I think. But at the end of the day, it it just matters. Like it just matters who counts the vote. It doesn't matter who actually votes, you know. And I think that's actually true. Not even counting. It's just who do they give it? Like George W. Bush in two thousand. You know, pretty sure that Al Gore won Florida, but we'll never know, or it won't matter because the day the people in power. He won by five hundred state votes. Yeah. Yeah, so we just gave him, you know, Jeb, you know, it's his brother. Yeah. <laughs> it's his, so he's like, here, here, brother, I got your, uh, here's your solid, you know, but and there's he won't no, the Supreme Court, so. Yep, just like, and that's what really, it really if, I, if anything's on the stake in this election, is that Supreme Court. Yeah. I mean, I, I, talking as a lawyer, I can tell you that judges have, I mean, it's not, they don't have, all this way in the world, I mean, because the law is the law. But in those 50 50 balls, the that conservative and liberal thing matters, you know. Yeah. And and so that's really what's at stake. Like, honestly, I mean, right now it's 6 3, right? So, who are the three yeah. that we have? We have Sotomayor, we have well, Jackson's gonna be there for a while, Sotomayor's gonna be yeah. there for a while. Um, and who, Kagan, right? And Kagan, yeah, she's still pretty young. So, I mean, she's gonna yeah. be. So, I mean, honestly, I mean, I don't. That's really what matters is the Supreme Court. I mean, are you telling me that John Trump Roberts? Trump? John Roberts, I don't think that he would vote to overturn the election results. I feel like he's one of those guys yeah. that still, you know, he's still in the the George Bush. Kind of old school Republican. New, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's a new Republican, but he's just a smart guy. He always leans wherever the court leans. So if yeah. the court leans Republican, he tends to write it in a conservative way. The, so the court leans liberal, he tends to write in a more not liberal way, but a moderate way. Just like how he got Obamacare passed to the Supreme Court. He did it in yeah. a way it was like, yeah, he's still a Republican. But yeah, we're not getting rid of Obamacare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, he's he's very intelligent. He's like one of the smartest justices I've ever seen. Like how he writes, how yeah. he articulates himself. He's one of the smartest I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, but that's the one that really matters, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 also, I also think I, I don't know. There's there's a couple of other ones that I could see them going in the correct direction. But there's obviously yeah. Alito. Uh, Clarence Thomas would never. Uh, who is the other really far right yeah. one? Oh, oh, I don't know about Amy Cone, Coney Barrett. So I, some of them I could see them I going against I like for the Barrett, institution. Go ahead. I don't think. Well, Barrett is conservative. She is conservative. Yeah, for sure. And then but, have it all. I like yeah. beer. I like <laughs> beer, and I say that joke like once a week. Every time I like in the store, I'm like, I like beer. <laughs> Every yeah. time I'm in the convenience store. <laughs> I say that joke, but no, I mean, the justices, I think they're, you know, I think they could have got, they could have let Trump get away with a lot more than they have. And they've kind of put yeah. the reins in a little bit on him, which I'm surprised since he appointed like two of them. Uh, and so I just, I, what I'm afraid of is they've given us, they already have a majority, super majority, but yeah, you know, I'm just afraid that they're going to lock that in for like 50, 60 years. And that's what I'm concerned is like, and that's why I don't think they need term limits like Congress because Congress definitely need term limits. Yeah. But I think we need like forced retirement. It's like, yeah. You know, but I mean, yeah, term like, limits for somebody who's unelected makes more sense than somebody who's elected every two years or every six years. You know, it, every, every election it. is a term. Yeah, I think so. Because it's like you see that stuff. It's like once they're in there, once they're once that name's on the ballot, it's almost impossible. Once they win that first election, yeah, it's almost impossible to get them out. It's like you need to raise so much money just to yeah. overcome that name. It's almost like they are in there until they're ready to, you know, croak. I see that as more yeah. a, a, of a campaign finance problem than in like incumbency. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like if we fix that problem, then we shouldn't have to have term limits. Which I don't know that it, which would be easier. You know, I feel like term limits actually would be an easier decision. But it is technically anti-democratic to just, you know, go against the will of the people yeah. because 
Yeah, but I mean, I, I'd prefer it if, if we can't get it. Is, it. is it the will of the people when majority of the money that is brought in valid. Um, by special interests? That's not the will of the people. No, that's Sorry. Valid. Maybe back cameo back here, but no, that's not the will of the people. That to me is just like, hey, special interest getting involved. For example, I knew there was a one movie that I watched, and he summed it up very nicely. It was Charlie Wilson's War. I told you about this stuff. He said oh, yeah, that, last week, yeah, yeah. I told you one of the famous lines in that. He says, "I don't get elected based on the voters. I get elected about." Who's my donors? And he's like, mm-hmm. my last name is Jewish. <laughs> and I have major donors. And that's yeah. how he went. Every single election, he won because he's a Jewish man who has a fund base where he can raise so much money. I, I see there's a congresswoman here. I really don't partake in you know, going after Democrats. But there's a woman named Jane Perman. You know this stuff. He goes against Debbie... What's her name? Debbie. Oh, oh, oh. Debbie Washington Schultz. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There is. Debbie Washington Schultz. She runs against her all the time, primaries her all the time. She literally yeah. puts out, like, dude, this lady's literally taking millions of dollars from this private organization. This yeah. millions of dollars. From private... hmm? Oh, I what was just saying, that? they're they're both Jewish. they're both Jewish. And uh, she's they're just Jewish, more yeah. willing. That makes her more willing to call out um her for how much money she gets from APAC, which is like a million a, a year or something like that. So, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a it's an interesting perspective. She's never been even close to winning, but she's definitely you know yeah, she keeps sure. trying. Yeah, she just keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but no, for I don't know, maybe, that's, maybe, uh, that's a Miami seat. Maybe you got to run against her next time. Just saying. Oh man, I'm so busy I now. I, the politics, <laughs> I would love to get back into politics, but the problem with politics for me is just like it's such a time commitment. Like when you're running, yeah, it's it's, it's not, exhausting. It's exhausting, and it's like for me, I, I feel like I have I do more help as a lawyer right now. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm always in the fight. Um, I, I eventually get back to politics. Eventually, I'm gonna get old. I want to not do this anymore or the law yeah. stuff you know but for right now i just want to give my money to help candidates like nia and you in the future and then i'd be like <laughs> going to a friend and be like hey seth nia remember i donated that money i get this garbage yeah. can call him like, oh, i'm never right <laughs> <laughs> jesse's running to become the correct <laughs> <crap. laughs> oh well i said Je- no, jesse's running to become to- the correct donor but we both talked at the same time again sorry become the what Oh yeah, no, I'm never yes. running for office. I talk way too much shit on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. That's what, our politicians are becoming unpeonated um, people. Like yeah. you can't be a politician and be a square anymore. Yeah, like, those things are gone. If you have no opinions, no one's gonna vote for you. I just don't want like all of my stupid tweets to just be on the summer jam screen for the rest of my life. Like I want to mm-hmm. like have that a little bit to myself. I didn't embrace that. I'm like, yeah, this is some dumb shit I said when I was like 23. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I mean, Trump yeah, has been saying, but Trump is saying dumb stuff since he was like born and <laughs> he became president. So, is this, yeah, but we have a now, more critical base. You have a quick, you, we do. But speaking of that, Nia, how, what made you a progressive? Um, I think I've always been like, I grew up a Democrat and like, and then I, I, th- I don't know. Like, I think, yeah, it was always, a, I was always on the liberal side. I was never a Republican. Hell the fuck now. Um, <laughs> no offense, but um, I, I, was, I was a life. I was a, I was raised a Democrat. Um, I went, then I went to college and then I like learned about like, learned to major in econ. I learned like other economic theories. I like yapped with my classmates um, yapped online and then I learned about like I think I've like bounced a little bit then I like sometime around like the end of college like post-college it was like a social dem- I was like a social democrat yeah. and then, like yeah. over the pandemic I became a Georgist yeah it's kind of the arena I play in nowadays well, too. The, what was that last term you said Georgist 
What's a Georges? Like a, basically, we, we just know about Georges. Good, land market good, land speculation bad. <laughs> Market cut land speculation. Yes, you, you, we, so, we, we ran on the land value tax, right? We did go over it, but you'll realize quickly, Neil, what Seth is. He's very, he goes deep into policy sometimes. And I'm like, Seth, I just worked like a nine hour shift talking to legal. <laughs> I don't, I can't process this, um, yeah. these terminologies and these concepts. Because he goes really in depth with that stuff, especially when it comes to taxation and the proper way we should be taxing. Um, it's one of those things where, like, land value at a tax, I think that's what he favors. No, you, you favor consumption taxes, I'm sorry, right? Well, land value tax, you just combine two taxes, the value added tax and the land value tax, but which yeah. value added tax is more of a consumption tax. Land value is just like there's land and we need to tax it. We currently tax property and property is property taxes, and that's much less efficient. So, you know. Why don't we just? Well, those property taxes tax the value of like the building and the land, whereas yes, like land exactly. tax tax is like the lo the land, like the literal yeah. location value. Well, yeah. I think that, and not to go into tax because that that would be a podcast in itself. Yeah, I mean, are you saying that the federal government should do it in addition to what the local does? Well, in Florida, we have that. We have the. I think we just need a full oh. tax overhaul. Like I think like. Honestly, yeah. I think the current model of like taxing productivity is just like creates too much friction okay. and just, like, doesn't really add value in terms of like, like getting like a consistent source of funding for services and all the things we need for government to get run. I think we should look at it from like taxation is not only a way to fund the government, but also a way to create better incentives in the economy. True. Mm -hmm. And I think like I also oh, go ahead. huge opportunity there. We're missing a huge opportunity there. Yeah. So did you, what did I think. You, what did you? Go ahead, Seth. Oh, I'm just saying uh, the pro. The I think the property tax is inefficient, as we've gone over, at least much less efficient than the land value tax, especially at funding education. You know, the, it's very yeah, inequitable. Definitely. I think we need a complete <laughs> overhaul in terms of education funding. I think that should be a federally guaranteed you know, equitable distribution of education funding, then I think the government should replace what we already had as the property tax with a federal land value tax distributed, you know, it doesn't even have to be the necessary funding of the education. We could do a, you know, a, a universal basic income or something funded by the land value tax, at least partially, but we need to do both. We need to get rid of the property tax and the way it funds pro uh, education and we should replace it with a land value tax. That's what I think. Yeah. Also, I'm like pro Pagovian taxes. I think we should, honestly, I think we should get rid of income tax. Like that's might be controversial, but I think <laughs> add in like <laughs> resource taxes. Like I think we should have like resource taxes. Like if we're that's really like, like Pagovian taxes, like if you like, let's say, sin tax. pardon? Uh, they, they call it a, a sin tax, a taxing on like, like certain behaviors. Like cigarettes like, and alcohol. Um, or I wasn't. Alcohol. I wasn't just thinking about that, that, but like things like okay, like let's say if you are trying to burn carbon, it's like yeah, yeah you need to probably tax tax for, yeah. tax for mm -hmm. carbon. Or if like you want to frack or something, then like you get taxed for fracking. Or if you're using X limited natural resource, like that should be taxed. And then I think that incentivizes companies to like. Are use their R and D dollars to like find other alternatives. Yeah. No, I I like that. I I think Mitt Romney came out one time with a flat tax, right? That was a thing. Uh, which <laughs> that's where he's. I mean, that's his thing. Is me personally, as you know, I I don't know where I stand with taxes. I know I have to pay them because they go they fund our. I do, look. I'm an American. Never. <laughs> I gotta pay my taxes. No, so I know I have to pay them. But the thing that, you know, what I want our tax to do is to incentivize productivity from lower levels to the higher levels. So what I mean by that is, is our tax dollars really reflecting the educational growth found in our minority and our poor communities? I don't think it is, to be honest with you. And like Seth said, you know, a lot of the education funding comes from, you know, property taxes, which are 
grossly inadequate in some zip codes and area codes, right? Uh, yeah, and so I think that we have to figure out, us as a society, what is it that the tax helps us be more productive? A regressive tax, a tax that, you know, anything that can al allow us to bring more creativity to the lower end, the lower class. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think that's why, I think personally, I think that's why I'm like so like pro land value tax. Because I think like right now as it exists now, I think like everything is set up for just like rent seeking all the way down through the economy. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think the idea is that like however you treat land economically sets up your entire economy. Like, yeah. because, like before you like go to work, like you have to get in a car, you have to leave your house you have to pay for gas. You have to do all these things. And that's all land use, all a result of land use decisions. Yeah. So it's like you even get to the office or get to the factory or wherever and start working. Like there's already a baseline and the baseline in America just sucks. <laughs> yeah. The baseline yeah. does suck in America. And we got a long way to go. And, um, and that's why we have many more podcasts to go because <laughs> we have a yeah. lot, a lot, a lot to cover. So guys, I'm I know sure we kept you a little bit longer. Yeah, I know we kept you a little bit longer than normal, but it was a good conversation. That's yeah, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Yeah, and um, I look forward to having Mia back. Um, if she can let us know where her Twitter handle is so people can follow her. My Twitter is underscore Johnsonator. I like that. <laughs> well, I'll post it in the description too. Okay. Awesome. All right. So, guys, we want to thank Nia for coming on. Uh, Seth, you got any final words? No, I think we got it. We got it covered. And, you know, we, we've been pushing it anyway. So we'll just try to wrap yeah. it up as soon as we can. Then. Thank you guys yeah, for coming on, though. Absolutely. I'm going to post clips throughout this week. Vote. Vote, <laughs> yes. of course. Vote. Got to turn yes. in my ballot tomorrow. I voted on the first day of early voting in New York. I was just like, <laughs> I'm going to do this. Get it out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm going to vote on Halloween. Are you going to wear your costume to the polls? <laughs> I, haven't figured, I haven't figured out what I wanted to be yet. Like, <laughs> I'm really deciding. My son, he's like five months old, right? So I'm trying to figure out what to um, what to put on him. Once I figure his outfit out, then I'll work my way up. You know, I don't know if I want to make him like, I don't know. Because he's such a clown. Not like a clown, but he's always smiling. He's always happy, right? And so I'm yeah. trying to figure out what what character I um what, what character oh, smile too just like what do the like what okay what is the zeitgeist for children these days? Because like from what I understand, it's like there's no interest in current and like yeah original IP for kids. It seems like they're more interested in like Skibbity Toilet and Coco Melon than like any Disney yeah. character. Or yeah, Disney. like we grew up on we had Disney characters. They don't have that. And so it's a little weird. And like I come from an island family, so they're so big into like you know Halloween being like the day of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we so gotta find that balance. Huh? Like, oh, my, my family's this is the way, yeah. You're the same way too. Yeah, they, we didn't we we didn't do uh, Halloween until I was like 16. Yeah, right. They get your parents go over like, <laughs> like all right. <laughs> like, like funny. It's like I'm half Jamaican, but like I did Halloween like every year. But I think it's also yeah. like my dad was like more hands off with that type of stuff. Like my mom was yeah. like was used to Halloween's was is American and yeah. is used yeah. to Halloween, so she ran that show. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, island people are like really freaked out about that stuff. They're like, um, like, oh, you know, we're going to like, you know, going to hell for like <laughs> eating candy and dressing up like Dracula. But <laughs> uh, guys, be safe. I know it's Halloween. Be safe. I'll, I'm going to vote up there first. But if you guys have children or if you're going to, you don't need children to go celebrate Halloween, still be safe. And um, I hope you guys imagine more, imagine great costumes. And so we have. All right. Thank you guys. <laughs> have a great week.